and welcome to a special edition of Culture here on I-24 News. For the past couple of years, the Islamic State, also known as ISIS or ISIL, has been gaining the world's attention and uh, wreaking havoc all over the Middle East. The Islamic State has also had an undeniable impact on art and culture, mostly a negative one by destroying precious uh, artifacts and historic monuments. But they also rallied artists and musicians to rise and speak up against their murderous and destructive actions. Here on the show, we've collected a few of the stories from the past year dealing with the Islamic State and its opposition. And we'll begin with the aforementioned destruction, with a story from the period when the Islamic State was conquering parts of Iraq and the world was shocked to learn about its impact on history and culture. Let's watch the report by Shahar Pellet. Islamic State jihadists have long proclaimed a war on culture. Alongside gruesome beheadings and torture in the name of religion, the radical Islamists have been systematically committing acts of vandalism on sites of vast cultural and historic significance. The Islamic State has sent us to these idols to destroy them. A new video from the production of IS has been released showing the destruction of statues and shrines of Hatra in Iraq, a city over 2,000 years old and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a desert site, stone built, pretty much one period only and it and it wouldn't take much effort to destroy the whole lot. Indeed, the militants are seen seemingly effortlessly destroying the area, dismantling and literally shooting the artifacts that have survived two millennia. Hatra was an important religious and trading center and is believed to have been built in the 3rd or 2nd century BC. It was mainly ruled by the Parthian Empire and flourished as one of the cultural hearts of the Mesopotamia region. Despite the destruction and ongoing conflict in northern Iraq, Baghdad reopened the country's national museum for the first time in 12 years earlier last month. Where the ISIS has, uh, has destroyed or tried to destroy the heritage. That's uh, a counter narrative. We're saying we'll preserve that, we'll cherish it, and we'll certainly work with everybody uh, and will appreciate the support from everybody in this preservation. The city of Hatra is the latest in a long list of targeted ancient sites. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon had already branded the violent smashing of priceless artifacts as a war crime after the jihadists bulldozed the ancient Assyrian city of Nimrud and smashed artifacts in the Mosul Museum. The attacks on Iraq's archaeological heritage are taking place in IS-held areas in the northern province of Nineveh, where Iraq does not have security forces that are able to respond on the ground. Now that the cultural outrage around the world has grown, coalition forces carrying out airstrikes against the militants will have to focus, among other matters, on weakening the group's large-scale efforts to wipe out history as we know it. In the age of social media, used uh, expertly by ISIS, I might add, their uh, opponents have also turned to the internet to spread their message. In some cases, they use the Islamic State's own propaganda against them, such as the case with the Islamic State's anthem, which was used in videos all across the Arab world in a way that uh, wasn't originally intended. More in this report by Daniel Campos. Just when you think there's no turning back, that you're about to witness a grisly decapitation by an Islamic State militant, sound of percussions suddenly turned events into a dance party. The name of this jihadist anthem is Salil al Sawarim, which means clash of swords. And it's the inspiration behind the viral videos that have replaced the Harlem Shake and Pharrell's Happy. But it's no tribute to the Islamic State. These are parody videos intended to mock the jihadists by making fun of their propaganda videos. One of the most bizarre of the videos showed a wedding and the attendees dancing and displaying a cage, similar to the one used by the Islamic State to burn to death Jordanian pilot Moaz al Kasabe. <laughs> The song is popular among the youth of the Arab world, Egypt, Jordan, Tunisia, Algeria, and also, less obviously, among Anglo-Saxons. Among the diversity of videos we can find, famous belly dancers. 
Amateur belly dancers, travelers on a bus, students, kids, edited versions of old Egyptian cinema. The song also made its way to Israel through this old man. But not everyone is amused by the videos. Some have criticized them for being blasphemous, others for being insensitive to the families of victims. The intentions behind some of the videos are not clear. Some are being interpreted as tributes to the Islamic State, while others as a weapon to exorcise the militants, to poke fun at them and beat them at their very own game but most importantly, to also celebrate life. Satire is, of course, a strong tool in opposing such a force as the Islamic State, and some in the Middle East have been uh, using it pretty well, making fun of the terrorist group. A TV show last year found surprising ways to ridicule ISIS. Let's take a look. The constant ISIS grabbing of the headlines in the world media might ironically be an inspiration for terror. Iraqia TV channel decided not to give in to fear and is currently dealing with a threat through humor. The channel has created a satirical series about the terror group militants starring the fearful Khalifa that never goes out, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The idea is to deprive ISIS radical ideas by making fun of the jihadists and encourage the viewer to overcome his fears. They believe that air conditioning is prohibited by religion as well as the use of the mirrors and taking haircuts. This is a backward thinking. On our show, we will explain the primitiveness in a comical way. A pretty difficult mission since most Iraqi actors fear retaliation. Many players were afraid to participate in the show, but many artists were involved, and I consider collaboration as a patriotic duty. Many artists were afraid to participate in this show because they fear the reaction of people on the street, but I have insisted on participatory in order to contribute to the fight against terrorism. There will be no more terrorism or ISIS. If this show is a new weapon against ISIS, its first scenes almost missed their target. In the first video clip, which was released and broadcast by Iraqia TV, the initial sequence indicates that ISIS was created by the CIA, Israel and the Gulf monarchies. The video portrays a cowboy pushing the devil to marry a woman with a Star of David around her neck, along with a woman representing Shaykh Moza, the wife of the Amir of Qatar. Then the charming couple gives birth to the Khalifa. After the first strikes by the international coalition, the United States and several Gulf countries, including Qatar, the creators of the series have quickly tried to correct this by removing the American cowboy and Sheikh Hamouza. Only the future will tell whether the satirical effort and the military one will achieve the desired result. Now, if uh, music or satire doesn't cut it, maybe the work of Akil Kharif is a better fit for you. This uh, Iraqi artist speaks out against ISIS by creating portraits of uh, the terrorists out of old, discarded shoes. Let's take a look. Throwing the shoe at someone in Arab and Islamic countries is an insult. Footwear is viewed as ritually unclean. Accidentally displaying an exposed soul is also considered insulting. Iraq has a history of protest by footwear. <laughs> Journalist Muntadar al-Zaidi famously threw a shoe at then U.S. President George Bush during a press conference in 2008. The events inspired the creation of video games, shoe exhibitions, and even the creation of replicas of this same shoe thrown at George W. Bush. But for Iraqi artist Akhil Kharif, old dirty shoe soles can also serve as an inspiration for a defiant parody on the Islamic State jihadists. The 35-year-old artist and architectural engineering professor is working on a mural of two dozen shoe faces. <laughs> Some people think that I'm offending the Islamic State by comparing their faces to the remains of shoes, because there is an Iraqi proverb that says, his face looks like a shoe. 
بالمصطلح الشعبي احنا نقول يعني But from my philosophic point of view I think that a shoe will get consumed earlier if you use it more ردت اقول انه الحذاء ايش قد ما نستهلكه ونمشي به راح يتشوه The brave controversial artist spends hours digging through the market trash searching for remains of shoes Akil Karif is sometimes mocked for searching through trash but wants to convey the idea that rubbish is not harmful and can be used for useful things the artist has already exhibited his previous works at the Venice Biennale in 2013. I cannot push the Islamic State militants to leave my country by doing this work, but I am sure that they will be embarrassed. Akil Karif believes he is no more important than someone who defends his country and carries a weapon and goes to confront the enemy face to face. Willing to die for what he calls a true cause, the artist will continue to fight for his freedom of artistic speech, even if that means risking his own life. Kurdish militants have been uh, shouldering much of the burden of fighting the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. Here in Israel, a singer of Kurdish descent has done her part by recording a song dedicated to her people in the fight against the extremists. Daniel Campos met her recently and brought back this report. These are songs about the Peshmerga, the legendary Kurdish fighters currently battling the Islamic State. Songs of praise like these have existed for decades, but not in the same form as today. A new curious phenomenon has taken YouTube by storm. The past two years, the web has overflowed with tribute songs accompanied by well-produced HD music videos that attempt to raise the morale of the Peshmerga. Depka. Hip-hop. Oriental pop, <laughs> electronic, <laughs> and more classical, <laughs> and traditional folk styles. Most of these music videos are made in Kurdistan and sung in Kurdish dialects by local musicians. You will be surprised to learn that this Peshmerga tribute was made in Israel. A cover version of the song titled Bo Peshmerga, recorded and filmed in the green fields of Evin Yehuda in central Israel by Yadasa Yeshurun, an Israeli singer born to Kurdish immigrants. Her loyalty to the Kurdish cause is always expressed through her music. <laughs> The fact that I sing a song in the honor of the Peshmerga fills me with pride. The song talks about how much the Peshmerga fight to protect the people and how much they suffer and sacrifice to protect the Kurds from those who try to attack them. We're very proud of all the Kurdish women and all of those who fight to protect the Kurdish people and support the Peshmerga. They all deserve our respect. Adasa has never been to Kurdistan, but she lives her life as if she was born and raised there. From her daily dress code to performing locally and representing the Israeli Kurdish community in concerts abroad. She's passionate about honoring her roots. Most Kurdish Jews immigrated to Israel in the 1950s, afraid of persecution from the Iraqi government. The positive family anecdotes about life in Kurdistan 
in Dura and the Yashuron family. It was a very good life that they had. When I say good, I mean it in all senses of the word. Friendships with the neighbors, celebrations, and the sharing of folklore, identity, and happiness. Adasa's music video is a drop of water in the sea of diversity of the pro-Kurdish music videos available. From military-styled music to very poetic songs, from videos with well-produced stories to those that only show pictures of Peshmerga fighters and Kurdish landscapes, all with the same goal, to motivate the people in bad times, to express hope for an independent home, and to raise the morale of the people. That's it from us uh, for today. Please uh, log on to our website, i24news.tv, for uh, latest news updates. And uh, join us again tomorrow.